Hi friends, welcome back to All or None Law. Today I'm going to talk about necrotizing enterocolitis. Uh, this is a very important uh, topic for um, pediatric board examination and for USMLE, AMC, MCCE, e and uh, other like MRCPCH examination. Um, before starting this topic, I would request you to subscribe to our channel that is All or None Law and please tell your friends to subscribe we need your subscription badly okay guys let me start with this uh, necrotizing enterocolitis is a very serious condition in uh, neonates uh, so we should know very well about this disease because we have to manage this very well because it's a life-threatening condition so the risk factors for this and necrotizing enterocolitis is a prematurity that is generally the lower GA the higher the risk of uh, necrotizing enterocolitis uh, ten percent of infants who developed any EC are full term. So look at this: ten percent uh, uh, of infants who develop in EC are full term. Cocaine exposed infants have two and a half fold higher risk for developing NEC. Antenal feeding: there is a uh, antenal fe feeding. More than ninety percent of infants who develop NEC have received at least one antenal feeding. Uh, hyperosmolar formula or medication medications alter mucosal permeability and cause direct injury breast milk significantly lowers the risk of NEC this is one of the advantage of uh, there are many advantages of uh, breast milk feeding that's why we encourage mother to start with a uh, breast feeding um, breast milk has been shown to decrease the incidence of uh, NEC uh, immunoprotective factors are lacking in commercial formula uh, all other interventions at this time remain experimental. Uh, asphyxia or uh, hypotension leads to low perfusion of the mesenteric bed um, causing intestinal ischemia and mucosal injury. Uh, hyperviscosity syndromes, exchange transfusions, use of um, H2 blockers, uh, PAF and other inflammatory mediators, clinical conditions for feeding volume and timing of initiation of enteral feeding remains controversial. So these are the risk factors you should know about. Okay, now now let's move on to the staging of the necrotizing enterocolitis that is the NEC. This is very important. Uh, okay, we have total, um, okay, up to 3B. Uh, let me start with the stage 1, the suspected NEC. The, symptom, the signs you see in this stage is apnea, lethargy, bradycardia, and temperature instability. It's just like a fever. If the baby has developed as a fever, so you can see these symptoms. Abdominal signs are very important. Gastric residuals, feeding intolerance, and goic positive uh, stools. A radiological signs, normal or non-specific. Look, if the baby is in the first stage, uh, so everything radiological finding is normal. They will have just few signs and symptoms. That's it. So this is very crucial. Okay, let me move on to the stage 2B. Okay, here. Uh, stage 2A, uh, that is a mild, uh, what you call, um, um, uh, 2A, mild NEC. As in stage 1, the symptoms are same, like apnea, lethargy. Abdominal signs, abdominal distension, abdominal tenderness, absent bowel sounds, bloody stools. Um, uh, radiological signs are alias, dilated loops of bowel, fecal nematosis, intestinalis. So this is very important, uh, pneumo, pneumatosis, uh, intestinalis. Uh, this is a very important finding for this uh, NEC. In a stage 2B, moderate NEC, as in the stage 1, mild acidosis and thrombocytopenia. Further development, abdominal distension, abdominal tenderness, abdominal wall, edema, abdominal mass. Uh, look at this, how the, this uh, is slowly they're uh, going to the severity. Uh, extensive pneumo, uh, pneumatosis, intestinalis, ascites, and uh, plus or minus portal venous gas. Okay, um, stage 3A or advanced NEC is a mixed acidosis, uh, need for a mechanical ventilation, hypotension, oliguria, neutropenia, and coagulopathy, worsening abdominal wall edema, um, worsening abdominal wall tenderness, worsening abdominal wall discoloration. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the radiological findings you see prominent ascites, uh, paucity of the boil gas, sentinel loop of boils. So these are the um, what you call uh, important uh, stages of uh, NEC. You should know about this. Okay, let me move on to the differential diagnosis. Okay, okay, here we have a differential diagnosis. 
okay, 3B, I, I didn't discuss about the 3B, right? Okay, 3B and the st differential diagnosis. Uh, stage 3B, that's advanced generalized edema, interactable hypotension, shock, DIC, electrolyte abnormalities. Um, on examination, you see tight abdominal distension, uh, significant discoloration of the abdomen, uh, absent bowel sounds, and the uh, pneumoperitoneum yeah, the signs are uh, the radiological signs what you see in these patients. Okay, now differential diagnosis, alias associated with the infection, sepsis, you should rule out sepsis, malnutrition with the obstruction or uh, mid-gut volvulus, um, intersusception, perforation, mesenteric vessel malformation, infectious and or allergic enterocolitis, severe forms of metabolic diseases. Okay, these are very important because um, you need to differentiate from uh, other type of, uh, uh, from uh, um, what do you call NEC. Okay, that's why you should know. Okay, let me move on to the next um, I think that is a differential diagnosis is our diagnosis we need to go uh, okay so I think uh, okay I'm, I I just forgot to tell you about the sign and symptoms of this disease in general you can remember uh, lethargy apnea bradycardia uh, respiratory distress irritability feeding intolerance uh, hypotension temperature instability uh, acidosis uh, oliguria, coagulopathy, poor perfusion, very important, blood stools, abdominal distension, abdominal tenderness, gastric residuals, ileus, abdominal wall erythema, uh, localized abdominal mass, ascites, vomiting. Okay, these are very important, uh, what do you call, uh, sign and symptoms. Uh, diagnosis, clinical examination is very important, systemic and abdominal sense, what we discussed above. Uh, laboratory studies, CBC, do CBC, culture of the blood, urine, CSF, what you call is a septic workup, right? We usually call in the residence as a septic workup. Uh, ga blood gas, very important is a blood gas, sedum, electrolytes, BUN and creatinine uh, ratio. Radiological findings, uh, findings like a flat plate radiograph of abdomen. Um, okay, and uh, left lateral decubitus film of abdomen if periton uh, pneumoperitoneum is suspected. Okay, how do you manage? Uh, this is also a very important uh, uh, step in this uh, management of these patients. How do you manage? This is very important. Uh, stage 1 for a stage 1 and for a stage 2A and a 2B and a stage 3, 2, 3A and a 3B. For a stage 1, make NPO, don't give anything, don't allow the patient to have anything through the mouth. Okay, decompress bowel, place a ripple tube to allow intermittent suction, continuous cardiorespiratory monitoring, okay, uh, controversial removal of uh, umbilical catheter or replacement of peripheral, peripherally inserted venous or arterial lines, broad spectrum and, um, antibiotics like gentamicin or and ampicillin uh, or vancomycin, clindamycin may be added if perforations or bowel necrosis is suspected. Uh, monitor for a pathological bleeding, strict uh, monitoring of uh, ins and the outs so you should know what is the output of the, uh, the urine output okay um, and even a bowel and everything uh, removal of the potassium from all the fluids um, uh, cultures are as outlined above other lab, uh, labs listed above can be followed seriously as indicated serial uh, abdominal pain films should be taken a plus or minus a decubitus view to evaluate for free air Q 6 to 12 hours for the first 48 to 72 hours then as needed Okay, stage 3, uh, 2A and a 2B, all the stage 1 management, plus consider TPN, you should start with the TPN to deliver 100 to 120 kilocalories per kg per day. Adjust the fluids to allow for possible frequent transfusion of the blood products and third space losses and the renal failure. Cardio respiratory, I'm sorry, respiratory support as required, cardiovascular support, strongly consider obtaining uh, a surgical consultation. Uh, for a 3A and a 3B, all plus whatever you have to do, other thing what you need to do extra is uh, refractory hypotension um, um, may become an issue, will need support with the pressors, uh, intravascular volume expansion with the blood products and the crystal or crystallite solutions. Uh, common findings in this stage include uh, severe thrombocytopenia, DIC, leukopenia or uh, neutropenia. Surgical intervention may be, need, may be necessary at this stage. So these are the very important things about um, what you call uh, uh, necrotizing uh, uh, enterocolitis. Um, the other thing um, what I missed here is um, uh, surgical management. Surgical options include uh, uh, exploratory laparotomy. Okay, uh, relative indication for uh, surgical interventions are uh, like interactable metabolic acidosis, uh, bowel perforation, abdominal wall erythema, okay, pneumoperitoneum, and um, fixed sentinel loop on uh, abdominal X-ray. Okay, so 
these are the important and the prognosis regarding the prognosis of this infant with uh, what you call an EC who sustain an intestinal perforation have mortality rate uh, less than a uh, 40 percent uh, in a stenosis or a stricture of the small or large boil may develop leading to symptoms of obstruction contrast and is usually diagnostic infants who develop NEC that requires surgical interventions have higher risk of serious sequels including increased morbidity and mortality hepatic diseases associated with the prolonged parental nutrition and developmental delay okay these are very important topics thank you so much for watching my video take care